I will be talking about the readme's, uh, but first uh, uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Mateusz Kuzak. I'm a community manager at the Netherlands Science Center. My background is life sciences, uh, cell biophysics, and bioinformatics. And uh, for a while I have been a research software engineer, so I've been developing research software. And for a while, for a while now I'm the community manager in the area of research software engineering. So I usually help research software engineers connect to their communities and help them uh, help them with their projects. Um, and I guess that's why I'm talking here about the readme files, because that's part of the uh, things. How do you interact uh, or make the interaction better with uh, the community uh, that is interested in your software? Or how do you make or get your community interested in your projects? Um, so, uh, from this very short talk, we'll learn how to use the README to communicate information about your project effectively, uh, how to write clear description of the project, um, which is very important and it's uh, actually quite difficult, uh, despite what you might think. It's easy to um, not realize that we're using jargon or we're making things more complicated because of our background. Um, and that we know much more than other people uh, might do. And uh, we'll uh, show some examples, some good examples of readme files. Um, and I guess your assignment will be to uh, either revise or improve or start your readme file for your project. Um, so again, we have this uh, matrix of, uh, of uh, how, where things uh, are in the OLS project. So this is uh, part of build for understanding. It's about communicating things about your project. It's about facilitation collaboration. It's about facilitation maintenance and uh, helping with the project management. Um, so the README is like a door map for your project. It's the first thing that people will see when they go to GitHub, they go to your GitHub page of the project. That's what they see, the, the content of the, of the README file. So this is like your unique opportunity to, get, to, to make a good impression. It's like the, the first impression where you make when you met, meet, meet someone first time. Uh, so this is when your potential contributors or users are going to meet your project. And that's why it's very important that they don't get discouraged uh, when they see it, but they actually get interested. So how, how can we make it happen? Um, but first, what actually is the README? Um, the README is it's a text file, usually. Um, it's, uh, it's found in the root directory of your repository. So um, all of you are working now on GitHub uh, with your projects. Uh, when you create a project, GitHub will automatically create a README file for you based on the information that you provided when you created the project. So there will be a header, which will be a name of your project, and then there will be a short description, uh, the description that you put in when you created the project. Uh, so I guess you already started with the README file. It's usually all in caps, so uh, all in caps README, it could be README.txt or README.md, which stands for Markdown. Um, Markdown files are automatically rendered uh, on GitHub in a nice way and they give you more possibility to, uh, to add some design things in your readme uh, over the text files, simple uh, text files. Um, yeah, and as I already said, this is the first thing that people will see. Um, so what's in the readme? Um, it's a, a, there should be a description of what is your project about? Why is it important? Um, who is the audience of the project? What, what makes your project special or exciting? Like why people would, should get excited about it and how they can get started either to use it or collaborate with you or to contribute to the project uh, and where they can find the, the, the key resources to, to like start their journey with your project. Um, and you can use the open canvas to start your readme file. Uh, I will show some examples and examples of the things that you can add to make your README uh, more effective. Uh, this is the example from the STEM role uh, models app. Um, and you see here, uh, there is the, in, in large letters, there's the name of the project, and then there is the vision 
of the project which i really like it. it's like the first thing you see is the the name and the vision of the project so it gives you the already the perspective what what it is about and then there's uh, there's this very welcoming message uh, and there are some links to more resources to find out to learn more about the project um, usually you also have so the the name the vision the, the welcome message project description these are all the things that we need in the readme file you can also add information how to contribute how to get involved um, in the previous category we already heard uh, it's a good place to put information about the license that is used apart from having a license file uh, and also information about the code of conduct and how to report um, violations because you want people who join to to know that there is a code of conduct and that this is the safe, safe place to interact with others um, what else uh, communicate the expectations around the readiness uh, it is important not every project is ready from the start uh, but you want to uh, make sure that you communicate it clearly what is the status of the project um, is it very early stage or is it ready for use um, communicate expectations for managing contributions like what kind of contributions are you looking for um, are you like what, what is the level of your time commitment how much can you support the contributors to your project because maybe you don't have the, those resources and you can't spend or you have limited resources or you have uh, um, like specific ways that you would like to uh, collaborate with others um, that also means describe communication channels and here's the example from the ReproHack uh, github repository so this is the the hackathon uh, which is focused on uh, trying to reproduce research papers and you see here first of all there is this welcoming message uh, but also you see the repo status uh, which is in this case is wip which is work in progress so it emphasizes it's it's still work in progress but it also shows you how you can join the conversations by joining slack by pressing the button join slack join us uh, and you can also keep in touch and see what's happening by subscribing to the newsletter um, and uh, you might be already familiar with uh, with badges uh, so uh, GitHub uses uh, those badges on readme files. These are very nice way, like colorful ways uh, of uh, communicating uh, various things that are, uh, about your project. There's a version of your uh, software if you have releases, the license, the quality of the code, uh, the documentation, testing, uh, does it have a continuous integration, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, you can uh, sprinkle it with uh, emojis. Uh, it would be more colorful. Uh, not everyone likes it, but if you if you like it, uh, that's also you can make it. I think it makes it a bit more friendly. Um, and sometimes you need to communicate something which is more complicated. You you want to show how to do something. You could use uh, animated uh, just for that. Mm. And as I already mentioned, is it's very easy uh, to uh over complicate things in the readme file or make it difficult for others to understand uh, what the project is about because you have an expert blind spot you know already much more about it um, and so uh, this is um, so how, how can we make it easier how how can we make sure that it's easier and accessible for others um, you might have no, uh, heard about randall monroe this is the person who uh, uh, draws XKCD comic or writes X, yeah, both writes and reads and uh, draws. Uh, and he wrote this book, uh, Things Explainer, when he, uh, uh, it's basically like a challenge how to describe uh, complicated stuff uh, in the word in simple words. So he used 1000 most common words in English language and he described different things. Like in this case, it's uh, Abgore 5. Uh, because the rocket is not uh, one of the 10 hundred uh, most uh, popular words um, and then there are tools that actually can help you do it you can use the um, there's the link here uh, to the upgore 5 uh, you can use the editor that will help you to write your readme file uh, using only those 10 hundred most uh, popular words um, and then there's the other editor that will help you also with with accessible readme it's uh, Hemingway app um yeah i think that's it i don't know if you're uh, uh, yo you're planning 
the exercise in breakouts with the readme files. So that's adequate. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's it for me. And please put in. Uh, ah, yeah. There are more uh, resources. So if you want to look up some examples of readme files, they are here. Uh, and put in the hack um, the ideas uh, your ideas for good readme file. If you know something, if I didn't mention, it's a lot of things that I haven't mentioned. So if you have, if you've seen some great readme files, you can put uh, examples there and ideas. And that's it for me. Thank you.